Hello, this is Introduction to Sociological Theory. Question one, what is theory? Theory refers to more abstract parts of sociology. The course is divided into two parts. Firstly, sociological perspectives, so that's your functionalism, Marxism, postmodernism, etc. And secondly, into sociological debates. So, is sociology science? Should sociologists try to be objective or value-free? Theory is assessed in um, Module 1 for a 10 mark per question and Module 3 for a 20 mark creek question. So, theory. A word to strike theory into the hearts of sociology teachers and students alike. It's going to be complicated. I'll never understand it. It's complicated. How can I teach it so they'll grasp it? However, as with everything in life, theory is about as complicated as you want to make it. And as with most things, if you understand the basics, it's much easier to grasp the harder parts. And besides, sociological theory is important. If we grasp the theory behind something, everything else is much easier to understand. So, what's a theory? It's a suggested explanation for something, a systematic and general attempt to explain something, and it answers a sociological question. So, why do people commit crimes? Come up with a theory. Why do people get married? How is our identity shaped by culture? How does the media affect us? Why do kids play truant from school? Why do some people believe in God and others do not? Answers to these questions are all theories. Theory is something we use all the time in our everyday life. Why do I feel unwell? Why are my friends behaving oddly? Why do I have to go to school? We all use theories to construct explanations about the social world in which we live, which in a way is what sociologists also try to do, but in a slightly different way, of course. Theory comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. To start with, we have high level theories, and these focus on trying to explain how and why society is ordered the way it is. So we've got functionalism, Marxism, interactionism, feminism. Then we've got mid-range theories, which attempt to focus on trying to explain some general aspect of social behaviour. So, for example, in education, why do girls achieve higher educational qualifications than boys on average? Then we have low-level theories, which are highly specific. So this might be, why do I always fall asleep in my psychology lessons? If you understand the basic principles of high-level theories, you'll also find it easier to understand other types of theory. This is because mid-range and low-level theories are often based upon the principles underpinning high-level theories. High-level theories are more commonly known as sociological perspectives. A perspective, for our current purposes, is simply a way of looking at and understanding the social world. Different sociologists working within different perspectives construct theories about the nature of the world. Unit overview, perspectives. The following sociological perspectives will be studied as part of this unit. They're all directly linked to AQA Sociology A-level and they serve as the basic introduction to the course. So we've got Marxism, then Neo-Marxism, Feminism, Postmodernism, Functionalism, Social Action Theories, Ethnomethodology and Symbolic Interactionism. Following is the lesson order in terms of topics. It's likely we'll spend two or more lessons on some of the more complex topics, for example, social action theories and postmodernism. In addition, there are associated homework tasks to complete between lessons, generally pre reading or completing the knowledge organiser. So here's the task list, so you can see that task one goes with lesson number one. And here's a shot from the knowledge organiser. So this will be given to you in a paper copy and your job will be to complete it based upon the lesson materials, your textbook and a help guide. Unit overview, debates. In addition to sociological perspectives, we learn four crucial debates in sociological theory. These are structure versus agency, positivism versus interpretivism, sociology as a science, and value freedom. 
Before we conclude, here's some example questions. So these are 10 mark questions. You would get this in paper one, which is the education paper. So you can see that they're all focused around outline and explain. So um, outline and explain two practical problems of use of postal questionnaires or outline and explain two arguments that suggest society may have moved beyond modernity to a new stage of post-modernity. And you should answer these in a PERC format. No need for an introduction, no need for a conclusion. In paper three, which is also the crime paper, we have some 20 mark questions. Here are some perspective examples. You can see that you have an item and you need to apply material from the item in your own knowledge to uh, complete an analysis and evaluation question. These ones are framed in terms of usefulness, um, but that isn't the only way a perspectives question can be um, expressed. Lastly, here we've got some examples of some debate questions. Once again, we've got an item. You're applying material from the item and your own knowledge, and you argue for and against. So we can see, evaluate the view that sociologists should take the side of the underdog and be committed to social change. This is a value freedom debate essay, and so you would argue for taking the side of the underdog and uh, having a value-laden sociology. And you'd also argue the counter argument, which is that sociology should aim to be and can be value neutral and objective. So I hope that gives you a good overview of the course. And um, our first topic is going to be Marxism.